What's going on, Steelers Nation? Welcome back to the channel. Today, Russell Wilson, Film Breakdown. You guys asked for it. Going to provide you guys with hopefully a really comprehensive breakdown of Russell Wilson's game, his strengths, weaknesses, things he does well, his fit within the Arthur Smith offense, the things that they're going to need to do in order for him to succeed, and some of the things that I'm a little bit concerned about with his game as he continues to get older. So all that stuff's going to come in the film room. I appreciate your all's support, all the comments on the analysis video. Thank you so much. Just please make sure that you like this video, drop me a comment, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. Let's get to it. All right, so Russell Wilson, 26 touchdowns last year, eight picks, a little over 3,000 yards, had a nice bounce back 2023 season after, you know, the prior season uh, without Sean Payton didn't go so well in Denver, but... Um, just kind of want to break break some things down, kind of segmented in terms of the things that he does well. So first thing I think everybody knows about, you know, the deep ball. Russell Wilson, one of the best deep ball throwers really in NFL history, but definitely uh, of his generation. And this is the kind of stuff that he can still provide you um, at the NFL level. You know, the commanders here are going to spin down. They're showing too high. They're going to spin down the, this week safety. Wilson does a good job identifying that. He drops a beautiful deep ball. And this is, uh, you know, that's right in the breadbasket. And this is one of the reasons that a lot of teams have, you know, went away from playing a lot of single high against him, just as, you know, his career has kind of unfolded because he has the capability of doing this. This is what he does best in the bucket. So that's really what he provides to you. If you play single high, he's going to take you over the top and create those explosive plays over the top. Now, next play we'll go over here. Against the Chargers, again, this is another example of just, you know, him pushing the ball vertically, a little playmaking ability. I wanted to show you guys kind of starting off with just his arm because I think it's important, you know, when guys get up to, you know, 35, 36 years old, a lot of people start asking, you know, is the arm still there? Does he still have the ability to, you know, take you over the top? Does he still have the ability to drive the ball with velocity? And I think when you look at Wilson's game, it's still there. I mean, this thing is, you know, a good almost 60 yards right in the bucket for a contested catch to Cortland Sutton. You know, it's nice to have all that pass protection time. You know, Wilson is a guy who likes to hold the football quite a while. We'll go over that a little bit later in the video. But here, just really like the calmness in the pocket, playmaking ability, nice shift up in the pocket to make a defender miss. And then again, slow it down for you guys. This is right in the bucket. A heck of a catch by Cortland Sutton. A nice one-handed grab right there with the guy leaning on his back. But, I mean, you can look at where Wilson releases this ball well across the 50-yard line. This thing ends up on the back pylon. That's a good almost 60 yards in the air for a fantastic catch. So, um, that's that's Russ's game, man. He wants to throw the deep ball. Again, just really, really gifted in terms of the things that he can do in terms of stressing you vertically. And this is another part of his game, you know, the play action. I think this is where his fit within Arthur Smith's offense is the best. Arthur Smith, when he was with the Titans, with Ryan Tannehill, had a lot of his success. This is what he wanted to do. He wanted to take you vertically, off play action, have that wide zone, outside zone scheme, and then try to take deep shots over the top to create explosive plays. And, you know, the um, the Broncos here are running a nice little uh, pylon concept. So you get the pylon from the number two, a little comeback route from the number one. Sutton doesn't even really get that much separation right here. But, I mean, this is just – the touch that he puts on this throw is just absolutely special. You see the play fake, hitch up in the pocket, in rhythm. I mean, that's a dime. You cannot throw it any better than that. And a nice job by Sutton playing through contact, gets a flag there, still comes down with the uh, touchdown reception. But this is what Russ is going to do. Uh, I think the Steelers are going to be extremely run heavy. They're going to run a lot of that outside zone. They're going to pound the rock, pound the rock, hopefully for efficient numbers and then allow Russ to take you over the top and create these explosives. You know, I tweeted out a couple of these videos on my Twitter account. I don't think it's hard to, you know, imagine, you know, George Pickens on the other side of some of these 50-50 balls or deep ball chances. I mean, Cortland Sutton's a really good player. I think Pickens is an even better player. So I'm really excited to see what these two can do when pushing the ball down the field. And, you know, I think the sky's really the limit in terms of if Russ can be the deep ball thrower that he's been for the majority of his career, you know, his numbers took a little bit of a dip over the last two seasons. We can talk a little bit of that, you know, scheme wise with Sean Payton. But, you know, this is this is something that he's done consistently over the course of his career. So really excited about what that's going to look like. Again, another example here, 
little gun play action stuff, which is definitely something that Arthur Smith is going to need to lean into a little bit more with Russ because this is where he's most comfortable. Um, but, you know, this is a good example of them moving the launch point, getting him away from the pocket because, again, that's where he's most comfortable. He likes to play on the perimeter. He likes to play make, get outside the pocket, play out of structure. That's his game, take you over the top for another explosive play. So, um, you know, the gun play action stuff, we can talk about that. That's something that I've referred to in my article for Steelers now as well. But it's a good thing because you don't want to become predictable when you get in the gun. You don't want to let these pass rushers continuously just tee off on him when he gets uh, in shotgun because he's not necessarily like a pure drop back passer. So this slows the pass rush down. You can see what it does, particularly to the interior guys, moves into the other side of the field. You move the launch point. They seal it off well originally. This guy eventually breaks free from the tight end. Russ does a good job making him miss. And then really a little baseball throw on the move. I'm not really sure if he means to put this on the inside because he maybe felt like he was running out of real estate, but this is a heck of an adjustment uh, for Marvin Mims here. Really talented rookie who I think is going to do some really good things, but excellent throw right there. Again, gun play action, move the ball down the field. Next play here, I, again, this section is just really going over the arm because I want everybody to understand that his arm, like 90-ish percent still intact from his prime. And I think that that's a really encouraging thing. You know, a good example right here against the Bears. They're um, going to split safety this. It's going to be a little Tampa 2 action. And the Broncos are just going to run what's called 989. So really it's just two go routes and kind of a post or a crosser uh, from the slot. Russ does a good job. Once he sees these safety split, hold this safety a little bit. And then, again, if you're willing to trust your arm to make this type of throw from the 12-yard line, I mean, this thing's on a line. It's got some good velocity to it in the bucket. I mean, that's, you know, deeper than the corner right before the safety. And he also throws it with enough velocity to where this dude doesn't even take a hit. I mean, these, these are the honey hole shots, what we refer to these as. I mean, he doesn't even take a hit right here. Nice, clean throwing motion up and down. Boom, right in stride, and it allows him to get some yards after the catch. So, um, again, I don't want to, you know, sugarcoat anything. The arm in terms of, you know, thing, if you're concerned at all about the arm, don't be concerned about the arm. It's still intact. He can still throw a velocity. The deep ball, the touch, it's still all there, man. There are other things that you need to be way more worried about uh, than this dude's arm strength. So, again, just, uh, you know, wanted to kind of go through some play action stuff. I really like Russ and play action. This is something that I wish the um, Broncos lean into a little bit more. You know, they were 22nd last year in play action usage. It's just not – that's just not enough with Russ. If you think back to his prom with the Seahawks early days of Marshawn Lynch, even as he got older and he started to take more of the responsibility in the passing game, play action, a heavy, heavy dose of it, was really the key to his success because it allows him to push the ball vertically and gets him to play – little more within the structure of the offense. So right here, they're going to pull a lineman, play action. This is actually called, I think, Flutie Sting is what Sean Payton calls this. Really, it's just a sail and go. You see Jerry Judy selling the sail route with the deep post as the clear out. Going to pump this thing up the field. And again, this is a ball that you need to drive with velocity because of the corner. You don't want to put too much air on this because then the corner can kind of fall off on it. But he drives this with velocity. And again, this is away from the corner, over the top of him, and before the safety is there, doesn't even really take a hit and almost scores a touchdown. So excellent throw. Again, the velocity is still there, man. And this is really how you kind of envision the Steelers using him. A lot of play action stuff off that wide zone system. Just push the ball down the field. You know, the, the run game is going to need to fi- need to really be the efficiency driver, and then Russ is going to need to find the explosives. And here we have just one more throw, just to touch on the arm strength. This is a laser. Chicago dropping back into a little cover two. Russ is going to work away from the mic, throw with some anticipation. Just check out when his hand starts to separate right here. Sutton doesn't even have his head back around to the football. Capital A for anticipation, and that's a dot right on the face mask. He's pumped up, fist pump, awesome celebration. Show you guys this one from the end zone angle as well. Again, you can see him immediately. ID the mic. Going to work away from him. He don't work in the middle very often. He only had 20 completions last season in the intermediate middle portions of the field. That was nine more than Kenny Pickett. We all, I think, you know, if you watch the Steelers offense, you were craving more of this. But the reason he doesn't target this area of the field 
is not because of arm strength. That's a laser right over the top of the linebacker. Show that one more time. I mean, again, can't throw it any better than that, man. The other thing about Russ, uh, you know, the elite traits, I think, that have carried him really to, you know, a potential Hall of Fame career have been, you know, the deep ball like we already touched on, you know, the ability to stretch the field vertically, and also his playmaking ability. Like, the things that he can do out of structure, this is honestly how he prefers to play, which can get a little chaotic. But the things that he can do when the play breaks down and outside the pocket and when he goes into this creation or scramble mode, are special and you still see some flashes of that even if the athleticism has waned a little bit at this stage of his career see a little okie doke here got an unblocked defender on the naked keeper spin around again this is off his back foot you talk about like arm talent i think some people only refer to arm talent as far as you know how how fast or how how much velocity can you generate on the ball this is arm talent being able to throw off your back foot to a guy in the corner of the end zone and dotted up like this over a defender. That's arm talent, man. Even at 35, there are just not very many quarterbacks that are making that type of throw. Um, and this is really what he's made his career off of. This is what he does best. That's his comfort zone. If we're being completely honest, um, another good example of him just making some stuff happen outside the structure of the play gun play action. We know we love that. I already talked about that a little bit, but Again, this is just an example of Russ making something happen. They love these crossers. Uh, we're going to see a couple more examples of this a little later in the video. They love these crossers in the red zone right here, but no one's really open at this point in the play. You got Max Crosby coming off the edge, one-on-one -on -one with the right tackle. We don't really love that matchup, but escapes out the back door of the pocket, throw on the run. Again, this is a good. This is a guy. We'll show a couple clips of him outside the outside the pocket just to show off the accuracy. But this is a guy who throws really well on the move. Again, this is how Russ wants to play. How he's made a career plan. You see, uh, Crosby, he kind of swims inside right here. He loses contain on Russ. And at this point, it's like that old Mike Tomlin clip when he was talking about Big Ben. Once he gets out the pocket, starts rolling right. That's when good things happen, man. A little baseball throw. Sling it in there. Again, this arm strength right on a face mask. And, you know, Russ, one of the things in 2022, I felt like, you know, when he had that really down season, his first year in Denver, I felt like one of the big things was, you know, he just he just didn't look athletic at all. You know, and it was weird because he his athleticism had been dipping a little bit in Seattle, but he just didn't look athletic at all. Last year, he came in a little bit lighter. He slimmed down. He honestly looked more agile. And you saw some things like this where he was able to scramble with his legs. He's not the same athlete he was back in 2015 or when he went to the Super Bowl with Seattle. But he's still a guy that can pick up a first down here and there. And Sean Payton even trusted him to run some design runs. I mean, we're not going to probably see that in Pittsburgh, although Arthur Smith does like some, some zone read with the quarterback. Uh, but this is a guy, you know, who can, when things break down, still has a little bit of twitch to him, get around a defensive lineman, scramble up. So th these types of things I st still think are valuable, even if they aren't as prevalent in Wilson's game as far as like the overall rushing ability. Another thing, you know, we're going to see a lot of play action bootlegs. It's a really heavy staple of Arthur Smith's offense. You have to be able to run these, uh, throw on the move. Good example right here, off play action. Little keeper, you got a guy on the flat. Usually how these things kind of progress, you got the guy on the flat, you usually have some type of deep over and you some type of clear out route vertically. Rest does a good job being aggressive, throwing the ball vertically down the field, pushing the ball. I like the subtleness to Russ's game too. Um, you know, one thing I don't think he, he's gotten enough credit for over the course of his career is just how some of the savvy stuff he does outside the pocket with the pump fakes and the shoulder fakes and looking defenders off. Watch him move. We know this guy down here, Marcus Peters, number 24. Watch him move Peters with this pump fake up towards the flat. Little pump, hand separates. He's just going to wing this thing in right behind him for a nice chunk play. So a lot of stuff to like right there. I didn't really show too many bootlegs because I figured you guys probably already know, you know, this is what this is what Russ does. I mean, this is going to be a big part of the offense. We're going to see a lot of wide zone, a lot of bootleg stuff. Arthur Smith's going to have fun, you know, moving the blanche point with Russ. Um, talk about crossers and stuff in the red zone. One of the things I like about Russ's game, too, you know, we talk about arm talent not being just about how far you can throw the ball, how fast you can throw the ball. 
but the touch you can put on the ball, especially when guys are breathing down your neck. So in the red zone, Russ had some really strong moments last year. You know, 26 touchdowns. That's more than any of the Steelers quarterbacks combined have put up in the past two years. You know, and I think that's a big reason that, you know, they're bringing him in. You, they want, want to score more points. They got to be able to score more than 21 points to consistently give them a shot to win games. We get a free rusher up here in the A-gap. That's, you know, rule number one of pass protection. We don't want to see that. Free rusher up the A-gap, throws off his back foot, knows he's going to take a little bump. Love, love, love the accuracy right here. Any of these bigger receivers, you know, George Pickens, just throw the ball up, man. Just let him go get it off the top shelf. Again, off his back foot. And that's a beautiful, beautiful throw. Allow your big body receivers to kind of box these little DBs out. Excellent throw right there. I think we got another example right here against the Chiefs. You know, Russ has oddly enough played uh, played the Chiefs fairly well over the course of his career. They beat them last year, I believe. Again, they love these crossers in the red zone. Jerry Judy running away from man coverage. Anytime you get man in the in the red zone area, these deep crossers are money. And he sees this thing really early too. Like you can tell right away, he knows he's got man coverage. Just gonna lob this one out there, perfectly in stride. Again, anytime you can get, you know, your your receivers on these runaways against man coverage, left tackle gets bumped into him a little bit, but still a really nice throw. Again, that's just drop right in the bucket. That's a handoff. Really nice throw in the red zone there from Russ. So I got a lot of questions about the middle of the field usage. You know, obviously a lot of that is Arthur Smith's offense. So how is he going to fit with this? Admittedly, it's a little bit of a clunky fit, but there are ways to get him to throw in this area of the field and ways to help him do so. So when I saw Russ attack the middle of the field when I was going through and watching all these different games, it usually came when he was working the front side with some type of inbreaker or high-low and doesn't have to get his eyes back to the backside. So right here, we're just getting a little high-low right here, a little option route from the running back and a kind of glance from the number one receiver in a split. Nice job hitting this with anticipation. Now, the big thing is right here, he's just reading this weak safety. So when this weak safety, they're, the Raiders are playing quarters. So he doesn't have a threat from number two because number two is coming from the backfield. So the big thing is if this guy is getting any type of depth, Rush just has to make sure he throws us on time. And he does. You see the hands start to separate, throwing behind the linebacker with some anticipation. As long as that ball's out on time, it'll keep him away from get, taking a big hit from that safety. Now, if that safety was playing more flat-footed, you'd want to tuck that down and move to the other side of the field. But really nice throw there from Russ. Uh, next play right here, coming out in empty. Uh, this is one of the big things with Russ. You have to play in empty. This is something that he does extremely well. He's really comfortable in it. Allows him to have a lot of freedom at the line of scrimmage. Um, this is something that you know, I think that Arthur Smith will need to lean into quite a bit more. Uh, but this, you know, late in the game against the Texans right here, they're going to put Cortland Sutton as the number three receiver at the bottom of the screen, and they're just going to run him up the pipe. This is Tampa 2, I believe, or some type of two uh, split coverage right here. This just gets him up the pole with a linebacker. That's a matchup that you really want. Love the anticipation here from Russ, throwing the ball right in the bucket. You guys will get a good look at this from the end zone angle. But again, once you spread the defense out like this in empty, it allows you to create mismatches and create matchups. And it's really easy reads for the quarterback because the defense is so spread. They can't really disguise any of their looks, disguise any of their coverages or their blitzes. So it does a good job. Rush just pre-snap identifying. He knows where he's going with the football. He's just trying to look off that other safety to get him out of the picture so that he can throw this ball right where he wants to. This is awesome. You know, when the linebacker's got his back turned like this, you know, they say width of the shoulders. There's, this dude has no shot. That's Denzel Perryman too. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. So there's no way he's making that play, especially on Cortland, Cortland Sutton. But that ball's on the money. It's a handoff, big time play over the middle. Next play right here, again in the shotgun, little gun play action. Again, we we know we need a lot of that. Already went over that, hit on that. That's going to be a big part, hopefully, of the offense. But I really like this too. Um, you know, putting Jerry Judy in the slot where he does a lot of his damage. Gun play action. Really, this just gives the play action token fake here. Again, just slows that defensive line down just a little bit, and it allows for a little extra time for the receivers to get down the field working vertically. But a really nice job by Russ, you know, just allowing Judy to make that little double move to the corner, to the post. And then again, 
it's a con- good contested catch by Judy. This is one thing that the Broncos receivers did a really good job of. I was a little bit underwhelmed by them on tape, to be honest with you, in terms of just generating consistent separation. But I did think that both of those guys, particularly Sutton, made a lot of really nice plays at the catch point. And, you know, the Steelers have a guy that can can do some of those same things too, right? Number 14, these type of catches or catch opportunities are right within his wheelhouse. But I like this right here. Just allow your guy to go up and get it. And I mean, I think he had six uh, deep ball completions over the middle of the field. So even though there wasn't much intermediate work and we can kind of get to why that is, uh, he did stretch the field vertically, you know, in the deep areas of the field as well. So I mentioned, you know, the utilization of empty and uh, how much it allows Russ to play within the structure of the offense, gets him to play a little bit more on time, but also it takes advantage of his football IQ. You know, this is a guy who's been around the league for, you know, 12, 13 years. He's seen every type of defense. He understands defenses, understands where the weaknesses are and how to take advantage of those. Good pre-snap recognition here from Russ, just, again, empty. So the playmaker spot, which is what we call the number two of the weak side of the formation right here, he's going to be lined up against the safety. So in that spot, they put Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy versus safety, if that's your number one guy, that's an opportunity you think that that dude's going to take advantage of. Now, the Lions end up bringing a little bit of a blitz. They bring five. What that means is you don't really have that that whole defender on that side, and they're going to isolate Judy on this little option route. He has, you know, basically a leverage choice. He can go outside. He can break inside. Nice job crossing the defender's face. Russ hits him over the middle. So these are some of the ways, you know, it, you know, Russ, he likes to play out of structure. He likes to throw the ball deep down the field. You got your play action stuff. You got your boot stuff. How are you going to find those other passing plays to keep you on schedule, kind of the meat and potatoes of the offense? That's what quick game is. So that's kind of what I always say. You know, quick game really is just to allow your quarterback to get in a little bit of a rhythm and to allow you to stay ahead of the chains. It's not something you can rely on, you know, 80, 90 percent of the time. But you can't throw the ball down the field 15, 20 times a game. It's just not realistic. So kind of want to go back a little bit, you know, talk about this one. You see Russ doing all these hand motions. He's just looking at the defense pre-snap. You know, he understands what the coverage is going to be. It's going to end up being a little Tampa 2. Once he sees this mic open his hips, he's going to check this thing down to the OTB over the ball route. This is just really a variation of Hank to me. You get the over the ball, and then you got a curl flat on the outside. This is a really simple completion. Again, just to move the chains. I think they're in second and short right here. But, again, it's just get him comfortable. It's just a one-step drop, throw it in rhythm. Like at Robert Spillane in coverage right there, you see the hand motions. Sean Payton, one of the things I do give him credit for, you know, I think a lot of people have these misnomers or bad narratives about the Sean Payton offense, about what he did with Russ or didn't do enough of with Russ. He gave Russ, um, you know, control at the line of scrimmage. And I think when you have a veteran quarterback, you don't want to strip them of that because they've seen so much. They're good communicators. You know, that experience needs to be an asset, not a detriment. So, um, and now we're to the video where I'm going to start to point out, you know, some of the things that are, you know, negatives with his game and just stuff to be aware of, you know, that the Steelers are going to have to work around. I mean, there's look, just being fully transparent, man. Y'all know how we do it on the video or on the channel. We go over the positives. We go over the negatives. I bring you guys unbiased, you know, opinions. So there's a reason why this guy was available and Denver was willing to take all that dead money for him to not play for them, all right? So the fact of the matter is it just didn't go very well in Denver, and there's some of the reasons why right here. Um, Up against the Patriots, this is last season. The Pats end up bringing four. Russ just kind of spins around in the pocket, brings pressure on himself. One of the bad things about Russ's game, just even when he was in Seattle, uh, he makes it incredibly difficult to block for him from time to time. I mean, there are just times where he does this, where he brings pressure on himself. If you just look at his drop, they do get a bit of a free runner off the edge, but their back's there. I mean, they have everything blocked up. They've got six pass protectors for really five rushers in a spa. And Russ just kind of runs himself into pressure right here, runs himself into the right tackle, spins around. And look, while he's doing that, if you really look at it, this is some of the stuff we pointed out really with Pickett last year, right? Look at the number three receiver. This is Judy. He's going to be working just kind of like Y cross, right? He's going to stair step this guy at the top of the route, push off. Now that might be offensive pass interference. But when Russ turns around, he can't see Judy, who has now like a step and a half on the defender. This ball could be thrown towards the sideline with a little bit of touch, and you're going to get an easy first down on third down. Instead, 
kind of twirl around in the pocket, bring pressure on ourselves, take a really bad sack on third down, you're forced to punt. So it's stuff like this about when Russ is forced into drop back situations, getting him to play consistently on time within the structure of the offense has just really never been a thing, man. Like he he wants to play out of structure. Once he once you kind of take some of the deep ball stuff away, when, once he has to drop back into these three and five step drops from gun, he's just not he's not that comfortable throwing from the pocket. And there are reasons for that. Um, but you just have to understand that, you know, if he gets in these situations, he's going to take some bad sacks and you're going to have to have offensive linemen that are capable of blocking for three, four five seconds because, you know, he holds the ball for one of the longest time to throw in the league. You know, he was over three seconds last year. I think he was one of four quarterbacks over three seconds. So it's just it's just how he's always played. A good example right here, this actually combines multiple things uh, that I think are kind of detriments or negatives to his game. Uh, the Broncos are going to be running a dagger concept to the bottom of the screen. You're going to get a clear out from the number two wide receiver, and you're going to get this deep dig from the number one. Right here, you can see Russ. He's looking at it. He's pumping. He's pumping. He's patting the ball. This thing, I mean, it's not it's not breaking wide open, guys. These aren't windows that you see in college, but this is NFL open. If a guy has a step in the middle of the field and you're, you know, this is, I mean, the Raiders look like they're playing two-man right here. Middle of the field, if you get a receiver that can break somebody's face and win over the middle, this ball has to be thrown 10 times out of 10. Got to be thrown. And if you're not going to throw it and you're going to try to play out of structure and get outside the pocket, you can't take a sack. And that's exactly what happens here. Again, this is a third and long situation. And the reason why I'm showing you guys this is because all of the things that Russ is struggling with right now as his game is aged, all of it has been magnified because he's no longer like the elite of the elite athletes. So the way he's been always programmed to play, he just he can't play like that anymore. Whereas a lot of pocket passers really hit their stride in their 30s. That's why his game hasn't aged as gracefully. You can see, look, he's looking at this dig right here. Watch. Pat, Pat, Pat. I mean, that's a triple clutch. I mean, you just don't see that very often. And then even then, like, pass protection's great here. I mean, he's had time to pat the ball three, four, five times runs into his own lineman, and again, like, I think 25-year-old Russ, man, he probably breaks this thing to the outside, launches some moon ball 40 yards down the field, but it's just, it's hard, it's hard to play like that, so there are just limitations, uh, just throwing over the middle, and he just holds the ball a long time, and he's going to take some sacks, and I think some of the middle of the field stuff is difficult, because you really can't blame him, right, like, the dude's, he's, he's sub six foot, there are just things that his height, like people will say, you know, around the NFL draft time, height doesn't matter that much for quarterbacks. It really does. Unfortunately, it does. And you see it on his tape right here at the top of the screen right here. I believe this is Marvin Mims running this kind of shallow in breaker right here. Russ sees it, but there's internal pressure in the middle of the pocket and he just can't really break. He can't really break down and throw right here because, you know, when you're sub six foot and you got these guys in your face, when you're six five, you could just throw right over the top of these guys or kind of drop an arm slot or something like that. He doesn't have the luxury that some of those six five dudes do. So instead of this being a third down conversion, this ends up being another, you know, kind of throw away basically at somebody's feet. So, um, you know, you just have to understand, like, that's that's the reason why the target areas for his heat chart are the way they are. He's never going to be a guy that can really get to, you know, those type of reads when the pocket's really muddy. Um, the other thing, too, I mentioned the empty quick game stuff. I just think that empty, for whatever reason, I don't know why, but it just seems like, to me, that's when he's most consistent in terms of playing within the structure of the offense. So right here, this is just a little red zone clip. The Broncos are just running double stick. I mean, this is about as simple as it gets. Every high school in America runs this. You get a little stick route from the tight ends and the little out route from the outer receivers. Now, the big thing here is the Vikings have six guys at the line of scrimmage, so they're bringing all six. This is blocked up. This ball has got to be out. I mean, this is the definition of quick game, right? This is one step, no hitch, throw the ball. If you just pause it right here, we've got at least three, probably four guys that are wide open. You just can't take a sack right here, man, especially in field goal range. You just can't do it. It puts you into third and long situations. You're going to end up throwing some type of screen the next play, and you're going to kick the field goal. It's frustrating for, like, offensive coordinators when they're calling these type of plays to get you in rhythm. 
and you just take a sack. It, that's that's some of the frustrations with Russ. And I, I just want you guys to be prepared that you are going to see some of this. A lot of offensive coordinators, whether it be in Seattle, now Denver, have tried to coach this out of him, and it's just not how he plays. So these are some of the drawbacks. There are things that you can do to, you know, minimize this. But it just that's just his game, man. You know, I think a lot of the people, um, you know, have noticed that, you know, Russ, he averaged like 7.8 average depth of target last season it was a career low for for him a lot of that was Sean Payton's offense a lot of screens I felt like they threw um but there are some stuff too where I felt like Russ just over the course of the season there were times where I felt like he was just lacking confidence a little bit so it's a sale concept to the top of the screen against cover three now I would argue that once he hits the back foot of his drop I think you throw the sale right here because I think you can get this over the flat defender and the cornerback has his back turned to the sideline if that dude is not an exceptional athlete, he's not going to be able to flip at that angle and break up this ball. Now, if you don't want this, the dig route coming at the bottom of the screen is also wide open. So you can go one to two and get to the backside, but those full field reads have never really been Russ's thing. Like you really have to construct your offense around like half field reads because by the time he ever gets to the backside of the progression, the defensive line has already kind of collapsed the pocket enough to where he can't see over the defenders anyway. So they're just very rare. Like you'll very rarely see him go right to left or left to right within the same play. He just won't do it because he just can't see over those guys. You can even see right here. He just ever so glances to the backside, but he doesn't even think about throwing it. So there's just a lot of check downs where I felt like it was a little unnecessary um, or I would just like to see him be a little bit more aggressive, you know? So, um, you know, with Russ too, there are definitely some things um, on film that I, I, you know, a little bit concerned with. You know, I think this is another good example right here. You know, the Steelers are going to, you know, they should be gun play action heavy. But these shot plays right here, they're designed to throw the ball down the field. So you're going to get two deep routes. You have a little clear out and maybe like a sail. I mean, this is open, right? Like you can throw this over whoever number zero is down here, the corner. You can absolutely throw this. You've basically got a two-on-one -on, on that safety. He either has to stay over the top or drive on the sail, and we end up checking the ball down. I mean, not only do we end up checking the ball down, I mean, there's a guy right on him. So as soon as he gets this ball, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, maybe this back can make those guys miss consistently like that. Luckily, he gets a penalty. But, you know, that those are just some of the small complaints that I have about Russ's game. Some of those, I don't – like, you're not going to be able to teach him to throw the middle of the field consistently – you're not going to get him to play consistently in structure of the offense. There are things that you can do to build around him, though. The deep ball accuracy, still, he's still got the deep ball. His arm is still intact. He's going to make plays for you out of structure. You're going to have to be really play action heavy. You're going to have to run the ball extremely well, and then you're going to have to just throw the ball vertically, try to create explosive plays off of that. It's going to be important for the Steelers to run the ball efficiently because his down-to-down -down consistency is, isn't what a lot of you know veteran passers provide in that regard like the drop back passing game isn't going to be extremely robust but you know like I said in the analysis video I think Russ is definitely still a guy that you can win with you have a good running game you have a good defense he's going to take mostly good care of the football he's going to put the ball in the end zone more than they've been accustomed to over the past you know however many years but just temper the expectations this is uh, Russ is not a guy that's necessarily going to elevate the entire offense, but he's a guy that um, is still a capable starting quarterback based on, you know, the dozen or so games that I've grinded out over the past couple of days. So I appreciate you guys watching as always. Again, just do me a favor, like the video, drop me a comment. Let me know what you guys thought of the video. Let me know if you guys are excited about Russ in this offense. And as always, I will check you guys next time. Peace and love.